Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Doing good, doing good. All right. Well, it was good to be in Sunday school this morning. Amen. So welcome to everyone that's here today. Uh, welcome to those that are watching online as well. Uh, we thank everyone for being here and thank you for taking time to, to spend some time in God's house here in God's word. Uh, if we have any new visitors, um, just be sure and text welcome to the number you see on the screen. Uh, we are having in-person Sunday school now, so feel free to come on out and join us. Uh, we'd be glad to have you. Uh, we're going to have uh, some people here that can tell you which class to go to. Just ask some questions and we'll point you in the right direction. And in the 11 o'clock hour, we're going to have our children's church. So if you have children, be sure to send them on out. We'll be able to, to minister to them as well. Uh, we ask also that you try to be courteous and wear your mask as you're traveling to and fro from uh, church to the, from the sanctuary to the ch uh, classes. And <laughs> as I mentioned, uh, it was good to be in Sunday school this morning. I, I know it's a little different. We hadn't done it in a while, so we're trying to maneuver as best we can, but uh, it was just good to get back a little bit of normalcy there, I thought. So our scripture for today is Hebrews 10, 22, and 23. And let us draw near with the true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, since he who promised is faithful. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, Father. We thank you for the ability to gather and to praise you, Father, and to hear a word from you. We ask you to be with Brother Allen. He's, he's the mouthpiece that you've sent for us, Father. And he will bring your message. We give him the strength and the boldness to preach your word, Father. We ask you to be with those that are not able to be here uh, due to this illness or uh, other concerns, Father. Just be with those. Lead them back at your appointed time. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Help us to be always looking for you and seeking your will out in our lives. Just forgive us where we fade. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How are we all doing this morning? Man, I love fall. You can see all the beautiful colors and the leaves and everything. Only our God can do that, you know? Um, if you will, stand with me. Um, page 28, To God Be the Glory, will be our first hymn. Yeah. 
sing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our victory when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Amen, amen. Love to hear everyone's voice. Next one we have is 154. What a friend we have in Jesus. Indeed, we have a friend in him. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Sunday this year but we have one from Children's Church that's promoting to the youth group and he's super excited about this his mama told me so we could not ignore it so Carson Mays we're sad to see Carson go to youth group but I know he's excited and God's got big plans for you buddy Amen. Again, good morning to each and every one of you. It's good to be in God's house this morning. Uh, what a blessing it is that we uh, are able to be in, in this house. Uh, this morning, uh, uh, as I stand before you, I, uh, talking about the tithes and offerings, uh, we have several different ways that you can, can tithe an offering here at Westside. Uh, it's on the PowerPoint there, as you see. I'm sure you've seen before, but uh, there are different ways you can do that. Uh, also, 
uh, we are here, deacons are here Tuesday and Thursday afternoons from four to six to take up offerings and to, uh, to pray with you if you need prayer or just have a good talk as well. So anyway, these are the ways that we can, we can give to God's house. It is, we're blessed by the way, uh, the offerings that we have here, we're thankful for that. What a blessing. God has blessed us here at Westside and we thank you for that. We thank the good, good Lord for watching over us and uh, taking care of us during these hard times. This morning, I'd like to read some scripture with you. Uh, it comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 13, verse 13. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission flowing from, his, from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful, Lord, for another day that you've given us and to be in your house. And we're thankful, Lord, for the offerings and tithes that are given here at Westside to further your kingdom, Lord. We're thankful, Lord, that you, uh, you give us blessings each and every day. And we are blessed, Lord, by giving you a portion, that little portion, just for you. Lord, we thank you again for this, uh, this time that we can come together. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to watch over us and guide us and direct us and everything for it's in Jesus Christ I pray amen brother Allen Miss Paula would you all please come forward please as you know we are we're blessed to have uh, brother Allen and Miss Paula uh, as he leads us here he and this family as they lead us at west side and we would like to take this time uh, to give them a, a little token of appreciation for the hard work they do. And uh, it is such a blessing to have this, this family right here. And uh, as we uh, gather here today, this is a little, a little token for you all. Thank you all. And we love you. We love you. Continue to, we pray for each and one of you. Amen. Thank God you bless all. You. Love you. This song I'm going to sing today, um, my aunt, she, she uh, if y'all haven't known, she's went through a, a, recently went through a stroke and actually was diagnosed with breast cancer and everything. And um, when, when she got the news that she had breast cancer and all that, she knew that wasn't praying, you know, was praying for God's will, whether she be healed or not, that God's will be done. This song has helped her through that, and the writer of it, Jimmy Fortune, he has an amazing story with it too. That he wrote this song for after he after his father, who was an alcoholic, he's afraid that he was going to his he was afraid his father was going to shoot himself and commit it and commit suicide, and ended up um, he waited behind a tree one day when he saw his dad load a gun and was expecting to hear a bang. His dad dropped the gun and went to in the house and said, well, I'll give the church a shot. His mom had been praying for him, and then that day he got saved. So this song is for you all. When I see the sun rise in the morning, when I hear the wind blow across my face When I hear the sound of children playing I know it's a part of God's amazing grace and I believe there's a place called heaven. And I believe in a place called Calvary. I believe in a man whose name is Jesus. 
And I believe that He gave His life for me. I was there the day my grandma went to heaven. I held her hand as she closed her eyes to sleep. I felt the power of 10,000 angels. Take her soul away To be crowned at Jesus' feet And I believe There's a place called heaven And I believe In a place called Calvary That he gave his life for me. speak for Paula and saying thank you for thinking of us. Uh, we are so thankful and, and blessed to be a part of this family we call Westside Baptist. At this time also I see the children's church leaving. If you have a kid uh, that would like to go and be a part of children's church, you can slide out the door at this time. First Sunday back with that and we're thankful. <laughs> I join others in welcoming you today here in house and also online. We are thankful for this beautiful day and this time God has allowed us to gather to worship. And we begin a new series today that will go for five weeks called Faith Is. And we're going to be seeing what faith is, what it does, how it works. And we're going to be turning to, if you want to go ahead and turn to the book of Hebrews and chapter 11, we'll be looking there in just a moment. Oswald Chambers said this about faith. He says, faith never knows where it is being led, but it loves and knows the one who is leading. I think that's a beautiful way to put that. Many talk about having a faith to move mountains that I'm afraid don't even know the maker of the mountain. And by that, I mean people say it's not uncommon to use the word faith or to hear the word faith. Many say, yes, I have faith, but their lifestyle and their actions prove otherwise. And then there are genuine quick Christians uh, like myself that honestly at times in our life need reminding of how we do come to God, how we know God, and how we have our being in God. And then there are times where we also just get beat down in life through certain seasons and through lengthy attacks of the tempter. And we need to go back into the basics of our faith. In these times in which we live, our nation desperately needs to see, not just hear, but see a true faith from believers. Desperately needs to see that. And they need to see how that faith works. 
And, and thankfully, we do not have to guess what faith is or how it works because God has given us the definition of faith in His Word and also many wonderful examples throughout all of the Bible and also here in chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, 1 and 2 says this, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old, speaking of the patriarchs or the elders of the Old Testament, received their commendation. Amen. Let's pray. Father, help us today as we are reminded how we come to you, how we know you, and how we live victoriously in this life. May a true and genuine faith not only be preached today, but be lived by your people. And so, God, open our eyes today, the eyes of our heart and soul, to see you, to come to you, to glorify you, and to proclaim you all with faith. Help me, O oh God, as I speak to your people. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The NET Bible states Hebrews 11 and 1 like this. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, being convinced of what we do not see, meaning with our physical eyes. But you know, as I was reading this very familiar passage this week and preparing, a word jumped out at me uh, this week, and it was that word hope. And I thought, you know, before we even speak about the words assurance or being sure, and before we speak about the word conviction or being convinced, I believe that we honestly need to answer a couple of questions. And it has to do with the word hope. One is, who is your hope in? Before we can talk about faith, we need to understand who our hope is in, and also what are you hoping for in your life? We all need to answer that because who your hope is in and what your hope is in determines where your beliefs are being deposited. So when you awake, who are you looking for for strength for that day? Honestly. Whose words are you waiting to hear that you might find peace in your heart? The news? Whose instructions are you heeding or listening to uh, to navigate through the day? Who do you talk to for assurance in life? Who are you really trusting in life to make things right? And who are you trusting with your sin and, and your mess and just the mess of life in general? Also, the reason that we must honestly answer that is because faith is only as good as the object or the person that we're putting our faith in. And so while, yes, God does use people uh, to help us through life, if our faith is in man and in man-made things or systems, then our faith will eventually be crushed and then our hopes are dismantled. And then you have a life with little to no hope, which millions upon millions are living with that now. Secondly, honestly, let's answer this question. What are you hoping uh, to happen during your time on earth. Be honest with these, with yourself and the Lord. Are you hoping just to do what you want, how you want, and when you want? Uh, are you hoping to have all things that the lost world wants? Are you hoping that people will respect you, know your name, um, 
celebrate who you are and your beauty and greatness? Well, if that's the case, as the old saying goes, you're barking up the wrong tree. Before you can know and understand true faith in God, you need to have a proper hope for salvation from the things that are waiting and wanting to destroy your life. We cannot hope for God to bless us also with the things that Satan is promising the world today. Colossians uh, chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2 uh, states it this way. If, you, if then you have been raised with Christ, in other words, you have received Jesus Christ by faith, you've been born again, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. We are to hope for salvation through Christ to be accomplished in our lives. Why? Because as Christians, our hopes are to be different than the world around us. And if it's not, there's a problem with our faith, with our hope. See, we're to hope for victory over temptations because we understand as believers how sin destroys our lives and others' lives around us. We are to hope for victory over difficulties in life, spiritual attacks. We are to hope for, for the glory of God, that we might live for Christ and His will for our lives to be accomplished. Our greatest hope is not to feel uh, completely at home in this world, but to one day stand in our eternal home, fully redeemed, and saved from the present age. And our hopes uh, should be for God to finish His work of redemption, to bring about the new heaven and the new earth, for His kingdom to come in all power and glory, for His enemies to be totally defeated, and for the whole world to see the glory of our God. Our hopes should be for God's people to know Him and enjoy Him forever. These ought to be our hopes. And once one chooses God's salvation through Jesus Christ as their Savior, then keeping our hopes and our faith in Christ and in the things of God is a daily endeavor of keeping our eyes upon Him. As Colossians said, on things above where Christ is seated, setting our minds on things above, not on things of the world. This is daily living in a relationship with our Lord. And see, if our hopes are in the wrong places and for the wrong things, our faith then is contaminated and we will not experience joys and victories of faith in this life. So we must answer that question. Who are we hoping in and what are we hoping for? Now, if you are desiring or you have put your faith in God and your hopes are different than the world's, then we now go back to answer the question in brief, what is faith in God? What is faith in God? And then we will answer, what does faith in God do? Well, again, we go back to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We see that faith is being sure that salvation comes from God alone through Jesus Christ, and you're convinced that Jesus Christ is able to not only save you, but also to keep you throughout all of this life and throughout eternity. 
and you're convinced of that. Even though for now we do not see him with our physical eyes. We are reminded in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk or we live by faith and not by sight. You see, for now, this is how we know God. It is by faith. And once you receive Christ as Savior of your soul, you're also receiving Him as Savior of every area of your life throughout every day of your life. You see, we don't have what some try to do and what we've all probably been guilty of at points in our life. We have our religion in this compartment of our life with our Savior here. And then we have other compartments for life, and we've kind of made our own little saviors for those areas too. And we try to keep them all separated. And the problem with that is that's not true faith, and that never really works, even though we try He is either Savior and Lord of all, or He's not at all. That's what faith in God is. What does faith in God do? It means, from Hebrews 11, 1, that you are certain of His promises. And when I say promises, I mean the promises that we find in the Word of God. And so if you don't read the Word of God, you don't know what the promises are, right? And also, I'll add, to deepen your faith, you must have a greater understanding of who God is that we find in His Word. And so this is why probably most Christians rarely grow in their faith because they don't know the promises and they don't grow in their understanding of who God is through the reading of his word. That is how we deepen our faith. It's how we grow in our faith. But faith is being convinced of his promises and also that you are confident in his power to fulfill those promises for your life and in the lives of all of God's children, even though, again, as Hebrews 11, 1 says, you do not physically see Him or the spiritual realm around you that is just as real and active as what you do see. But that's what faith does. It is being sure of His promises and it is being convinced of His power to bring about and to fulfill those promises in the lives of the church and each believer. That's what faith in God does. Now some will say faith is like a blind leap into the dark. And that's not true. That's not true. True faith is a step into the light and life of the God that has revealed himself to us. Not only in nature, but also through the church and also with the Holy Spirit and also through his word. God has revealed himself to us and we are choosing to believe in his promises of salvation and also we are convinced of his power to bring them about. Our spiritual eyes are opened, if you will. It's a commitment we make to trust Him with our lives every day. Not just once coming to an altar and being baptized, but every day choosing to trust God and believe. Being sure of His promises, convinced of His power. Now, If you do not take the step to trust or to have faith in God and to know Him, you can trust Him to judge you. He will. He has to because He's just. But I also want you to know if you will trust Him as your Lord and Savior, you are, the Bible says, in Christ. And you can trust Him at that time to bless you and to keep you and to see you through until the end. John Piper said it beautifully beautifully when he said, If by faith you are in Christ, 
God is as much for you in Christ as He will ever be or could ever be. Christian, that ought to be like a chicken dinner for your soul. See, the question we have to answer is this. Here's the question. Is God trustworthy? That's what we all have to ask. Is he trustworthy? That's what we all have to not only ask but answer. Can I or will I trust God with my life? Can I trust him with everything going on in our nation? No matter who wins an election. Doesn't matter who wins an election, God's still on the throne. And is he trustworthy? Am I sure of his promises and convinced of his power? That's what faith is and it's what faith does. Pastor Tony Evans' phrases or describes faith in this way, and I love it. It's so simple and yet so profound. He says this, Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. And I think that's spot on because I love the word acting. We live by faith. Not that we just talk about faith. We live by faith. And so are you acting or living each day like God is telling the truth? If we are certain in His promises and confident in His power, then we act like it, right? We don't talk like the rest of the world that has no hope and is wringing their hands wondering what tomorrow holds. That's not us. If, we, if God is trustworthy and we trust Him, then we act like it. And people will be able to see that, how we walk, how we talk, how we respond to different situations and circumstances. People will see our faith. And the nation needs to see a true faith not an empty hope. We live like it. You see, true believing changes the way we live, and with faith we find God's approval, and we find God's blessing, and we find God's reward. Hebrews 11, 2 again says, For by it, what? Faith. For by faith the people of old, the elders, the patriarchs of chapter 11, for by faith the people of old received their commendation. Listen to me as we begin to come to a close. Faith, uh, let, let me go back. If you can't say today that Christ is your Savior and Lord, Faith is the only essential response for you to know the grace and power of God now and forever. Faith is the only way you can come to God and know Him for now in this earth. That's it. You can be a good old boy and a good old gal and people love you and respect you. But faith in God, being sure of His promises, being convinced of His power, and coming to Him by faith is the only way to come to God now. That's it. That's it. And then again, if we truly believe, then we live like we believe. We act like God is telling the truth. We act like God is trustworthy. We 
talk like God is trustworthy. We respond like God is trustworthy. It's how we meet and know God, faith. Listen, what will you meet fear and doubt with? Or what do you meet fear and doubt with? When trouble comes, and it does, what do you meet it with? When loss comes in this life, and it does, what do you meet it with? When failure comes in life, what do you meet it with? When pain and persecution and bad news comes in this life, what will you meet it with? You have to answer that, and I have to answer that for myself. But the truth is, if the answer is anything but faith in God, you will not overcome in this life. Nor will I. First John 5 and 4, the apostle speaks it beautifully when he says, For everyone who has been born of God. Stop there. This is the person that has found God to be trustworthy, who has put their faith in God, who has been born again, who is sure of the promises, convinced of the power of God. For everyone who has been born of God does what? Overcomes the world. Say that with me. Overcomes the world. Who? The person that finds God trustworthy of their life and of the world that he created. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Say those last two words with me. Our faith. That is the victory that overcomes the world. And it's not the strength of your faith or the power of your faith, but it is the strength of the God that you put your faith in. Sure. Being sure of the promises, convinced of the power to bring them about. I thought of the old hymn this morning. I'm thinking of that. But faith in God is the victory that overcomes the world. I pray that you are an overcomer by faith in Jesus Christ today. If not, will you today find God, find Jesus Christ trustworthy? Let's pray. Father, forgive us as your children when we do not walk and act and live in faith. When temptation comes against us, when the evil one comes against us, God, help us to set our minds on things above and to set our spiritual eyes upon you, Heavenly Father, who is in heaven hearing our prayers now. Lord, with your Holy Spirit, Draw each heart and soul to you this morning, to the throne of grace, that they might find victory in their faith in you. And help us, Lord, to go out and live in such a way that people see and hear our faith. We are sure today, Lord, of your promises. And we are convinced that you have the power to bring them into completion. Save, restore, heal, bind up, Heavenly Father, and keep us through this world and make us fit for heaven only by the blood of Jesus and our faith in it. And we ask these things in our Savior's name. Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, at any time, even when this invitation ends, the true invitation to come to God by faith never ends.
And if at any time today or throughout this week you can place your faith in God, and we'd love to help you in your next step of faith. And if you would, just text those two words, next step, to that number on the screen. We will respond to you as quickly as possible and help you in your next step of faith with Jesus Christ. But also today, we're going to open this altar up. And I pray that if you are here without Jesus Christ, that today you'll slip out of your seat and that you'll come down and I'll be down here to greet you with a mask on and lead you to Jesus Christ. Don't wait another day to find God trustworthy, to believe in the promise of salvation. But you must do so by faith. To other Christians, maybe who are just beaten down or tired or you just needed a reminder in these crazy times, uh, again, I'm down here to pray with you or the altar will be open for you to come and pray. And there are other decisions some might need to make about following through with baptism. That takes faith. It's an act of faith. And, but it's being obedient to the Lord. And you need to come down today and to prepare be baptized in the weeks to come. Maybe it's other things that God has spoken to you and been speaking to you for some time about a ministry or being a missionary or going into the ministry, whatever it might be. This is also a day to act upon that with faith and to put down, if you will, a spiritual marker in the ground and say, today I find God trustworthy and I trust Him with my life and with this world. Whatever decision you might have today, I pray that you will be obedient and come to Christ and turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let us stand together and sing. Hymn number 413.
Amen and amen. Thank you so much uh, for being here today. Be sure and look around, see who's not here, and uh, if you know they're not able to be here, uh, reach out to them this week, invite a friend to come next week, and as we prepare our hearts to worship again. We'll be in-house on Wednesday night as well. We'll be continuing in our studies of uh, Wednesday Night Wisdom, a study of the book of Proverbs. So we encourage you to come and be a part of that at 6.30 also. And what a great day, amen? Thankful to the Lord. David Baker, I'm going to ask if you will, thank the Lord for this day and dismiss us in prayer.